I'm Marcus Holland, I'm the founder and director of DM Historics. So DM Historics is focused on car sales, classic car sales, and also has an historic racing division as well. My father's name is Dominic and uh, my name is Marcus and so um, and we were dealing in historic cars and so it kind of it, not the most creative name but it was something which we felt like represented us and was a natural kind of unison of his name, my name and then what we were what we were trading in. DM Historics was founded out of our sister company which is E-Type UK and that was undertaken as a result of a desire from customers to part exchange and to sell cars that weren't within the Jaguar or specifically the E-Type. We also at the time were undertaking historic racing and we weren't racing within an E-Type or, or in a Jaguar and so the feeling was that DM Historics would be a natural evolution for us at that moment in time. We purchased the company in 2016 or started running the company in 2016 and that started out as a as a full service entity within the E-Type space so essentially it was something whereby if you owned an E-Type and you wanted to upgrade it, you wanted to maintain it, you wanted to restore it, and if you wanted to sell it, then E-Type UK was able to undertake any of that for you. And that's still what we're doing today, but what we've done with E-Type UK is effectively, we've broken out the sales division and moved that within DM Historics, which is just to broaden the reach, broaden the appeal, but also make the division clearer to our customers to say, okay, if you come to E-Type UK, we are still very much focused on the servicing, the upgrading, the restoring of cars, as well as bespoke building of, of E-types. And if you come to DM Historics, we can sell your car. And actually, they cross, they cross work together and, and are able to support each other. I would say that actually the beginning of the company really kind of came about when we were in Essen in 2017. And that's where we kind of came up with the idea. It's been something that we'd spoken about at Retromobile as well. So a lot of our ideas and a lot of our evolutions have come when we've attended uh, big events. We actually got into uh, um, Silverstone Classic at the time in, in the Cortina, which is just behind us. And when we, the car wasn't really prepared, it wasn't fully race ready. We would only just kind of started racing as a team effectively, um, as in terms of me and my father. And it was one of those kind of things where actually just finishing was going to be an achievement, let alone kind of competing. And so that's always a kind of fond memory as I remember dr driving on the pit lane at the end of the race. And it was kind of celebratory almost even though we'd only finished fifth from last or something but it was it was still a nice moment where we went okay we've we've ticked the first box of, ra of racing as a father and son team my name is alastair gill i run the workshop here at dm historics i oversee all the operations of cars coming in going out i'm involved uh, very prominently in both sides dm historics and also e-types and um, we look after all aspects of it as soon as the cars come into the workshop then it's it's over to me i look after look after it from start to finish so again that that covers both both elements realistically on a day-to-day -day basis obviously I, I answer the telephone to customers calling up to book their cars in for servicing work maintenance work talk about restoration work upgrade work whatever is required on their on their cars generally um, from the smaller jobs to the bigger jobs, also whether it's advice or not. Ultimately then that hopefully leads to a car being booked in for us, which obviously then oversee the booking, arranging a date that's suitable for them, for us, you know, so they're not left waiting around, being realistic with scheduling. And as I say, then seeing the car in, making sure the car that arrives is obviously all safe, sound, and there's no, no pre-existing damage or any issues to worry about with the car and then obviously translating that list of, of work requirements that's been given to me uh, to then the technicians to then get on with the job and, and, and oversee it from there really. In terms of members of staff, we have here, we've got 15 people in total, seven technicians uh, dedicated to, to working on the cars. We look after all elements. We service, restore, maintain, problem solve, full restorations, basically whatever's required, we generally carry out on site. racing really came about in 2016 we went to Google Revival um, and I came away from there always had an interest in racing I'd done karting kind of when I was younger not professionally but done it as a kind of um, a bit of fun you know birthday parties and the likes and always enjoyed it and liked the idea of actually having a purpose when you're driving and the racing was a challenge to get better and so from my perspective after going to Goodwood I really kind of felt like actually going historic racing and with the ultimate goal of trying to race at Goodwood myself one day uh, was kind of a nice, a nice ambition to have and tied in nicely with what we were doing. So racing for me certainly came very early on in the journey and was something that I was really keen to get involved in, um, but hadn't 
didn't have a race license, I'd never gone racing before, I'd never really been on a racetrack, and so all of that had to get established um, from there, but it was, it was something that was large in mind early on. My father only started racing, I think it would have been probably 2018, 2019, um, it was something that he'd wanted to do, but was a bit concerned that potentially wasn't going to be competitive or um, didn't have the time necessarily to, to commit to the racing side. Um, but since he's taken it up, he's loved every minute of it. And so he kind of started a bit later than myself. I never looked at racing as a two, as, a, as, as an option. Um, but it was something that kind of came about when my father started saying about he would be interested in going racing. He went and did a couple of track days. Um, and then as we started looking into it, we kind of thought, well, actually that'd be, that'd be quite nice. And we're not there to, to win. You know, obviously everyone likes to pick up a trophy here and there or feel like that they're progressing. But for our, from our point of view, it's all about the enjoyment and kind of it's, it's some father son time and we're both involved in the business. And so a lot of our relationship, you can quite quickly get stuck into actually what's going on at work. How do we progress? How do we evolve? What are we doing? What's the, what's the next kind of big decisions? What direction are we trying to take the companies in? Um, and actually the racing just resets all of that. It kind of becomes about, we go out, we go driving, we have fun. You know, we go out for a, din for a dinner in the evening, we have a drink or two, and it just goes very much back to actually what are the basics of a father-son relationship. And it's, and it's really enjoyable. And from both of our sides, we're not trying to win. So there's not that kind of aggressive competitiveness or there's not that thing of we're disappointed if we haven't finished first. So currently what we're focusing on is, is we've got an FIA Mini um, and we are focused on, on running that. So we've run that in CSCC, Masters and, um, and the events like that. Um, and we're looking at doing maybe a couple of HSCC events. Um, and so that's our focus currently. Um, and that's something where me and my father can both drive the car. And so we're really looking for two seater events, which has, has taken us out of some areas. But so far that's been our focus, uh, moving away from the Cortina, which we did for a couple of years. You know, we love driving the Mini. The advantage of it is, is it's all about keeping the momentum, keeping the speed, um, not braking too aggressively. And so what you're trying to do is you're really learning about actually using the car and getting the car moving through the corners because um, you're not going to get much speed on the straights so you're trying to carry it all through the corners which is great and to be honest they're difficult to spin so it's kind of it's quite nice you actually look better than you are when you're driving a mini because you can kind of chuck it in and largely you just mash the throttle if something's uh, if something's going wrong what i love about historic racing is the focus on the mechanical aspect of it rather than the electrical aspect so in modern racing it's i feel like it'd be a lot harder and it's a lot more involved and you're into ecus and and electrical systems historic racing is mechanically a lot simpler um but also there's a side of it that there's a community aspect so i feel like when you go historic racing it's all about making sure that everyone's having a good time that everyone's able to go racing in there there's the sense of community you turn up and if you have a problem then everyone's there to help you out If you came to us wanting to buy a racing car, our focus would be on understanding what kind of racing you want to do, what level of experience you are. We have a number of people that we know within the industry as well who can kind of help us out and also give some guidance. Um, we had it recently with a customer of ours that came saying that he wanted to buy a Mark 1 Jaguar. And so that was very clear. He had the ambition to drive a Mark 1 Jaguar. Um, and so we were quite clear on, right, that's where we focus. Um, but we've had it in other occasions where someone's come and just said, look, I'm starting out in historic racing. I don't really know what I want to drive yet. I just want to, to start dipping my toe in and kind of getting a feeling. And then it's understanding, well, have you done any racing before? Have you done any karting? What kind of cars are you used to driving? Have you done any track days? And then we kind of build the picture from there because we all want to go out and I'm sure drive, you know, a Formula One car at some point. But for someone coming in, that's a huge leap to, to start with and actually could break your confidence quite a lot. We certainly had it with the Cortina, you know, rear wheel drive, very slidey, that's where you get the speed from. And starting out in a Cortina maybe is a step too far for some people. And so it's kind of just getting people comfortable and understanding what they're trying to achieve. Some of the biggest challenges really is, is managing expectation, is actually, again, as I said just previously, is listening to the customer as to what they want. And then obviously, guiding them through that whether sometimes they request some items which you know we know can't be carried out that's the key thing is is generally is just working with them um, not telling them what they want but actually just working with them and explaining why they can't have certain things 
or what can be done, you know, what alternatives there are, whether it's the upgrades, you know, whether they want bigger brakes, whether they want this, whether they want that. You, you have to work with them, and that's the key thing, because a lot of that's changed recently in the, in the last five, ten years. With the power of the internet, they're reading more, they're seeing more things online, people are doing this, that and the other, and they want to translate that onto their cars, which in a lot of cases is not possible. Um, so you just have to really guide and help and work with them. That's, that's, that's the key to it and build up a good relationship with them and they'll trust you. The strength and depth we have is, is, is phenomenal. Um, my guys are, are very, very well equipped and, and knowledgeable on all aspects of anything mechanical. So although we specialise generally in the E-type side of things, the knowledge on the basis of models is, is quite wide, wide ranging. You know, a couple of my guys have been Ferrari for a long, long time. So again, that side of things. And that translates to a lot of Italian stuff, not just Ferrari. So again, that covers that. Then we have other guys that are very well ver versed in, in certain other, other manufacturers as well, MGs and things like that. I've got another guy here with Lotuses who's built Lotuses in the past. Again, so we cover it. So between all of that, the, the, the knowledge basis is there. Um, and fundamentally, a lot of it translates one to the other. Different models and different, obviously, manufacturers have different ins and outs and, and foibles, but fundamentally, they're a mechanical object. And once you've got that aspect, it, it's not too much of an issue. The plan for DM Historics moving forward is to grow the sales side. We want to grow our presence within racing. We want to become um, more synonymous with, with historic racing, but we also want to kind of continue to focus on expanding our sales, our sales division. So that would very much focus on um, bringing in more than just kind of, we've got a heavy focus on E-types. We want to retain our specialism in the E-type sector, but we want to, you know, look at, at offering XKs and other marks as well for sales. So that's kind of our focus currently is, is growing the sales division within DM. We want to focus on ensuring that customers have a good experience. And so what I wouldn't want to do is sit and say, actually, within five years, we want to be the world leading classic car sales outfit, because I don't think that's achievable whilst retaining good customer service, making sure the customers are happy, make sure the customers feel like that they've had a pleasurable experience. Because to do that, we would have to go on you know, unparalleled growth effectively and we wouldn't be able to support that with all of the uh, kind of back office needs that that would need and make sure the customers have a good journey. From my perspective what we want to achieve in the next five years is gradual organic growth which is driven by good customer experiences. So the customer goes away and says I bought a great car, I love the car, I've been taking it back to them and actually DM Historics is a, is a good company to deal with and then they tell their friends or their kind of fellow enthusiasts and then they come to us and say I heard that they had a great experience we would love to sell our car through you or we would love to buy a car through you and that organic growth and making sure that the customer is at the heart of it is really important to us at DM Historics. I think what separates us from a lot of other businesses is we do really like to involve the customers in the whole processes again our attention to detail and broad depth of knowledge is, is I think is a, is, a, is a very strong point that we, we have over a lot of other perhaps uh, uh, companies etc but I do feel and I do like the fact that we have an open door policy. So when we're building customers' cars, whether we're servicing customers' cars, they can come in and see that car at any point. There is nothing that's behind closed doors or anything. And a lot of people, a lot of customers do like that. They will come in, they will have a cup of tea because they never get a chance to see their car on a ramp. So I do like to think that we offer a very bespoke package to these people because a lot of stuff goes on behind closed doors that people don't necessarily get to see with their own cars. And it's nice to involve them in that because then they become part of you know, part of the company, part of the fabric, we become, you know, as I say, because it's a family run business, it's very orientated to that. And it's nice to involve everyone because as I say, they then become very loyal and obviously part of it. And it just, it, it's just, it's just a really nice thing to see customers really appreciate their cars in a different way than necessarily they would have seen before rather than just handing it over to get it serviced. In terms of the future, I'd very much like it to, 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 to grow in strength. I don't think necessarily growing in size is the right way because you tend to then lose uh, uh, quality and focus. And I'm very proud to say that every single job that we do here, doesn't matter how big or small it is, the, the, the attention to detail and the quality does not vary. And it doesn't matter whether you're just Joe Bloggs off the street that needs an oil change doing to a complete restoration. The quality is the key element. And I always work on the basis that if any of our cars leave here and goes onto another ramp or goes to another garage, they can then look at the work and go, this is lovely. That's how you need to work it. But in terms of the future, I'd just like us to see basically focusing on that, growing the business in that area, perhaps expanding with, with other uh, varieties of manufacture of cars to a degree, 
but really I, th I just see us pushing the E-Type side of it as well, as far forward as we can. Our plans for racing in the future are we still focus very much on the Mini. We want to get competitive in, in the Mini and, and really kind of start running running near the front or in and amongst it and so that's really our our ambition currently um we're using a lot of a lot of the right people um in that space as well so we prepare the car here uh we run the car from our premises but we use the likes of swift tune in terms of the engine um and obviously seeing the minis go around goodwood and when you watch you know uh, Nick Swift and obviously Nick Padmore in the in the uh in the Betty Richmond trophy when there was all all the minis that was you know for everyone i think that kind of inspired them to go let's get out and race the mini and so from our point of view we were certainly no different and uh you know and then the most recent revival where you have um you know them in the st mary's trophy and and they're running there is we would love to be part of that and uh, and certainly um feel like that we're kind of in, in and amongst it even if we're not at goodwood itself that we're very much competing with the guys at the at the sharp end of the, of the field longer term than that as i said you know we would love to get into racing uh uh an e-type um probably the likes of you know the kind of rac tt cars maybe maybe not that level but kind of the pre-63 um area area would be great for us um and a natural progression and so that would be something that we would like to push push towards if we can